Hey guys, hope you're doing well and are ready to continue with the topic on monopoly. So hopefully you remember from the last video the difference between perfect competition or a firm that operates in perfect competition and the firm that is operating as a monopoly. The key difference, and make sure you go review it as the graph you see going across your screen, is that a competitive firm faces a demand curve which is horizontal, which means they can produce as much or as little as they want without changing the price they sell at, which is given to them by the market. As opposed to a monopolist who has to very carefully choose how much to produce because the price and quantity decision they make is going to be determined from the demand curve which is downward sloping. So make sure you're clear on that and now let's proceed and this is the example we talked about where in most cities utility and things like tap water or garbage disposal they are usually uh, run by you know one or very few producers. So that's the closest example that you know one can get to for a monopoly. So in this video, we'll talk about revenue, right? So you should know the three different kinds of revenue, total revenue, average revenue, and marginal revenue that we talked about under perfect competition. We're going to do the same thing here for a monopoly and see what the difference is. So total revenue is easy. Hopefully, you remember, it's just price times quantity. How much a monopolist charges times how much they sell gives them total revenue they earn. Average revenue, which is total revenue divided by quantity, is also the same as it was for perfect competition because it's P times Q divided by P, which, sorry, P times Q divided by Q, which gives you P. The last one, which is the one that's going to be very different, and it's very important you understand why it's different, uh, is going to be marginal revenue. Here, the definition is the same. It's the change in total revenue divided by the change in quantity. So it's a change in P times Q divided by change in quantity, which is the definition is still the same. But the difference now is that under perfect competition, we said the price remains constant. So the only thing that changes is quantity. Right? So we were able to simplify that formula to say that the marginal revenue for a perfectly competitive firm equals the price that they charge given to them by the market. That is not going to be true anymore for a monopolist. So in a monopolist, ask yourself, what do you think happens to marginal revenue as they increase production? So we know they work on the downward sloping demand curve. So think about it on your own, pause the video and think about it before you come back. Uh, what happens to their extra revenue if they want to sell one more unit? Think about they have to operate on, on a downward sloping demand curve. So if they want to increase quantity by one unit, what do you think happens to the extra revenue they get from that person that they are selling to? So think about it. And the answer, and we'll, I'll do a numerical and a graphical example to illustrate the point as well. When a monopoly drops the price to sell one more unit, they have to lower the price for every previous unit as well. They cannot charge different people different prices, right? So that's, we are assuming that a monopolist is not able to charge different prices to different consumers. So if that assumption is met, then the extra revenue they sold from previously sold units decreases because if they want to sell one more unit, they have to decrease the price for everyone. So if you were able to make that link and guess that, uh, that's very good, means you're paying very good attention, uh, pause the video and go get yourself a treat. And if you're somebody who did not guess that, then you have to pay extra attention. All right, so let's do a numerical example to look at the relationships between total revenue and marginal revenue for a monopolist. So I have an equation here, uh, quantity equals 20 minus 2p. You've seen and worked with equations like this before. I'm going to solve for the inverse demand function, which is just solving this equation in terms of price. Right? So I've just taken price to one side and solved for that equation because it's more convenient to work with uh, the equation in that form. So total revenue, uh, average revenue, marginal revenue, you should understand the formulas. Total revenue is price times quantity. So I've taken this p and multiplied this equation by q. Right? So it's 10 times 10 minus half of q times q, so it just becomes 10 times q minus half times q squared. Average revenue, you know from the previous uh, slide that it just equals price, right? because that's what uh, the equation is. And then marginal revenue is the change in total revenue over change in quantity. Right? So that's the equation, and then we're going to do a numerical example that corresponds to this equation. So total revenue uh, is just P times Q. This is the quantity, so I've just picked a bunch of different quantities and price uh, relationships from these equations. So we know that if the monopolist wants to sell more quantity, he or she has to lower the price for everyone. If they want to sell, if, if they're currently selling nine units and charging all those nine people five and a half dollars, if they want to sell to one more person or the tenth person, they have to the lower, they have to lower the price to five dollars for everyone. Right, so keep that in mind uh, as you proceed with this example. So total revenue is just P times Q. You multiply the first two columns and you get the third column. All right, and then the average revenue is just P times Q over quantity, which is just price. So if you look at the fourth column, you're just taking total revenue divided by uh, quantity, and then that'll just give you the same uh, numbers as the second column. So when we are graphing it, what you should understand is that the, you know, the demand curve is a relationship in P and Q. 
I guess I'll draw it before we get to the last one. P and Q tells us the relationship between the, uh, you know, uh, tells us the demand curve relationship. So it's going to be a downward sloping line. Average revenue you see is, you know, if you want to graph quantity on the x-axis and revenue, average revenue on the vertical axis, it's the same as the demand curve. So the demand curve equals average revenue when we are graphing this for the monopolist. Again, keep in mind on the x-axis, we only have quantities. And on the vertical axis, we have everything that's measured in dollars. So total revenue, average revenue, marginal revenue, costs, when we bring that into the equation, they're all measured on the vertical axis. All right, so let's continue with this. Then marginal revenue is the change in total revenue. So change when we go from eight to nine units is one and a half dollars divided by change in quantity, which is one, so it's one and a half. Then change in revenue is 0.5, and then change in revenue is negative 0.5 because now revenue is going from 50 to 49.5. So what you see is that total revenue increases for some level of quantity, and then it decreases because P times Q is a relationship that changes when we sell more and less units because the price changes as well, which is what's very different from perfect competition. Hopefully you're, you know, you're making those links. And then therefore marginal revenue is positive, but then it declines and it even becomes negative. So when we draw marginal revenue, so when you look at the relationship between uh, quantity and marginal revenue, you'll see that this column always has numbers that's less than price. So it's going to be below the demand curve and it's going to at some point cross the axis. All right, so hopefully you are understanding what we're doing here. Now let's graph total revenue. So a couple of things, total revenue we know has a quadratic form. If you're not very comfortable with that for uh, you know, that much math, don't worry about it. Just understand that it's not gonna be a linear line. It's not gonna be a straight line. So if you draw that out, what you're going to look, what you're gonna get total revenue to be is something like this. So we know it increases and then it uh, decreases after this point, All right? So I'm gonna increase it for some quantity and then it's gonna reach its highest point and then decrease. So let's talk about the relationship between total revenue and marginal revenue. We know total, you know, we know marginal revenue is change in total revenue divided by change in quantity. We know quantities on the x-axis, we know total revenue is being measured on the vertical axis. So if you think about this line in terms of this graph, marginal revenue is just the slope of the total revenue because it's change in the vertical axis divided by the change in the quantity. So make sure you see that link is that MR is just the slope of the total revenue curve. So now if we think of MR in relation to total revenue, we see that MR is very steep, right? So the slope is high. It becomes flatter and flatter. The slope reduces. So MR becomes smaller and smaller, right? For this quantity, MR is higher. For this quantity, MR is lower, right? So hopefully you're seeing that. And then it gets to a point where the slope is zero. So MR is going to be zero at the point where total revenue is at its highest, which is where we go from being upward sloping to downward sloping. And then after that, it starts to decline, which means the slope is negative, it's downward sloping now. Therefore, MR is going to cross the horizontal axis and become negative. So it's very important to see that MR crosses the x-axis at the same exact point where total revenue is maximized on that graph. And then the demand curve and average revenue, you know, we've already drawn that from before. So hopefully you're seeing these links because now in the next video, uh, we are gonna bring costs back into this equation and see how you measure profits for a monopolist as well. All right, so now let's look at what happens to total revenue as a monopolist is going to produce more, right? So you understand now the relationship between total revenue and marginal re revenue. Now let's see what happens uh, on a graph when they want to produce more output. So when a monopolist wants to produce more output, they have two effects that are opposing. They, they increase quantity so they get more revenue because they're selling to one more person. However, they had to lower the price for everyone so they are losing some revenue on those people who they were selling at a higher price for. So when I do the example graphic on the next, next slide, uh, this should make more sense. So when I do this uh, example, explain it graphically in the next slide, this will make more sense. And we know law of demand states that if you want to sell more quantity, price must go down. Right, which is again different than perfect competition because there you were one producer out of millions, so you could had you'd had no impact on the market outcome. All right, so now let's do a graphical example and see what happens. So I'm going to draw two graphs uh, just to illustrate the point. So you have quantity price, you have quantity price, you have a demand curve, which we know the monopolist is working off a demand curve, which is the whole market demand curve. So let me pick a price here, P0, and then we say if you charge P0, quantity is Q0, and you want to sell one more unit, 
you have to lower the price for everyone. So these Q0 people, you were charging P0 before. Now when you sell to one more person, that means every person, people, you know, all the people before Q1, you have to lower the price to P1 for them as well. So let's do the same thing here. But now, sorry, in, in fact, we are going to pick separate points and see what the difference is in the outcome. And that's why I didn't pick specific numbers because they're not gonna correspond on the same graph. So again here, if you want to sell to one more unit, you have to lower the price. Now let's look at what we had on the previous slide, which is the output and uh, price effect. So total revenue when they were charging P0 and selling Q0 is this big rectangle. Total revenue when they charge P1 and Q1 is this rectangle now. So if you look at the change in the areas, the monopolist gains this much in revenue because they are selling to one more person and charging P1. However, they're losing this much area because those Q0 people now are paying this much less. So in this scenario, when they sold more, total revenue seems to increase because the output effect is more than the price effect. Here, same, same reasoning, as the price goes down, they sell one more unit. The gain in revenue is this much and the loss in revenue is this much. So here what you see is if they want to sell one more unit and therefore lower a price to be able to do that, their total revenue is falling. So hopefully this should make the concept from the previous few slides very obvious, which is for low levels of quantity, if you want to produce more and thereby lower the price to be able to do so, your revenue will rise. You'll get to a point where revenue is maximized, which is where MR will cross the x-axis. And then at some quantity, your revenue is going to keep going down as you want to produce more. All right, so hopefully uh, all of these concepts are a lot clearer now uh, that we've done, looked at it both numerically and then done a, done a detailed graphical example as well. So just to put everything together, you have your demand curve, you're going to have your marginal revenue curve, which is always going to be below the demand curve. And you know that this is the quantity where if you were to draw total revenue, that's where it would be at its highest point. All right. So and the, the, you know, the important link is that if you want to sell one more unit, you have to lower the price for everyone, which is why price of the good will always be more than the extra revenue you get if you want to sell one more unit. So make sure you're very clear with how you analyze total revenue, marginal revenue, and graph it in relation to each other and the demand curve for a monopolist, which is very different than perfect competition. All right, so that concludes today's video and make sure you're very comfortable in understanding what total revenue, marginal revenue in relation to the demand curve is for a monopolist. And eventually when we bring in the next couple of videos costs and measure how they, you know, how you look at a monopolist profit and we'll talk about how this market differs than a perfectly competitive market. So study this material and I'll see you in the next video.